Hey everybody, today I am sharing with you my unicorn dream tablescape. There are so many DIYs in this particular um, tablescape that I put together that I thought, you know what, let me just show everybody kind of an overview of all of the elements, all of the DIYs, and um, maybe give you a better sense because there's a lot of colors and it's easy to get lost in all of the pictures and the different elements. So. This video is just an overview of how the whole table got put together. Um, if you want to see specifically how I made uh, the Unicorn Dream placemats, which are done in an acrylic, uh, I would say a fluid acrylic pouring technique, similar to other ones I've uploaded. Um, I do have a short video on that, on how I created them. And then also the centerpiece elements, how to get that cool unicorn rainbow um, filler. I have a super, super easy tutorial on that. Um, you'd be really surprised, I bet, how easy it is to do. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna start going over the table like I normally do to kind of give you guys a better sense of the different elements I used, where I got them, um, just little tips and suggestions in the event that you are trying to create something like this at home. So first things first, you can tell um, that it is a colorful table, but the tablecloth is white. This is probably one of my, my most used linens. It's a white polyester linen tablecloth that I got from Amazon. We've talked about it before, so I'm not gonna go over it too much. Um, but take a look at what you can find on Amazon because it's less than 20 bucks, goes all the way floor length, so it has that nice formal look. It's super easy to wash, a little bit difficult to iron just because of its size, but it looks nice and um, it holds up well. So that's what we're working with. Um, as always, I have a, um, we're, we're working on a folding table. So this is definitely something that you guys could do at home um, with any table that you have, because if I can do it on a folding table, surely you can do it on a proper dining table or whatever size table you have. But also um, round tables could easily accommodate this with um, some minor changes. So we've talked about the table, we've got the tablecloth, the linens. Um, I actually got a set of six of these. Um, from the thrift store. They're just a, um, a polyester, nothing fancy. Um, this napkin fold is, is very basic, but if you are not sure how to make it and you're curious, let me know because um, I can put together a tutorial. Um, and if you're not um, able to catch everything that I'm talking about, I do post on every blog, um, in every blog post that I share regarding one of my tablescapes, plenty of detailed shots so you could reference them for your own personal use. But I also say, where every single element was found, um, whether I purchased it, I got it from a thrift store, I ordered it, I made it, whatever, it's all in that post. Um, just because ugh, there's a lot of things to keep track of and if I don't write it down, I'll forget in six months. Um, but also, it's important for you guys to note that the green linens and uh, let's say the pedestals, all are from the thrift store. Um, but you could easily buy them too. So this is not like an event type of ordeal where you have to order everything and make sure everything comes in on time. I would bet you could get most of this at your local thrift store uh, if you don't already have it. So I digress. Okay, <laughs> so um, there is a tutorial up on how I created these uh, placemats. I've done other ones similar to this and I have some more in the works that are actually drying right now. Um, but this is my unicorn dream inspiration. These are going to be used as placemats here. And I'm just going to move this napkin off to this side because I really, I really loved how these came out. Uh, so obviously the colors are super fun. I think they're good for end of spring, beginning of summer season. Um, and it wouldn't be a unicorn slash me if I did not put some glitter in there. So there's some iridescent glitter. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah, you can tell that I sprinkled on while these were drying. Um, and I'm just gonna pick this up so you can see um, how it looks. I mean, like that is just really cool and a unique placemat and look how thin it is. And um, I, I go more detail into my in my videos, but these are just acrylic panels that are 12 by 16 that I use the fluid acrylic pouring technique on. And it's really just a matter of finding what type of fluid acrylic outcome you like. Um, there are so many different types of marbled effects that you can get. Some people are really into the cells. 
um, which are like, uh, there's not really too much in this one, but they look like little cells and there's, there's so many cool techniques out there. So, um, if you're interested in that, check out some of my videos about it. Um, Google it. It's called, uh, fluid acrylic pouring or acrylic pouring. Um, there it's just, it is an amazing process, but anyways, um, each one of these is unique, uh, because that's just the nature of this type of art. So every single one is going to come out different, which I really like because I really like having, um, just unique settings for everybody that are cohesive. So you could tell like this one's got a little bit more yellow in it, but this one over here has a little bit more purples and blues in it. Um, even, oh, the cat's excited about it too. <laughs> um, but so they're all interesting. They're all unique but they all have this cohesive napkin on it that kind of brings them together. And um, with that, the same thing kind of goes for the, the drinks, um, the cups that you see here. They're actually cordial glasses that I had, um, I had get, my mom had gotten for me ages ago. I use them for cordials, um, but I think in this instance, they could also be used for um, really small cocktails or something, especially if you have like a welcome toast or something, depending on what, what type of event you're using this for. I would love to see these used as, um, like something for a toast at the beginning, like when people are sitting down and getting started. So they're all part of the same set. Um, there was a set of four, but they're each a little bit different, um, probably intended for different types of cordials or whatever, but I like that they're diverse, but cohesive all at the same time, which is what I'm all about. Um, but also with that being said, if you like that type of look easily, easily, I guarantee you, if you went to your local Goodwill, your thrift store, wherever you're going, mitch, mismatched glasses would be so easy to put together that you could find, I would say in one trip, if I had to guess, I mean, I've never been to Goodwill and not seen individual glasses that there's only one or two of that I really liked and I wanted to get, but it's, <laughs> it becomes a problem after a while. So if you're interested in that, really, honestly, spend like an hour one Saturday morning and go to a couple thrift stores in a row, and I bet you could recreate this look very easily um, as far as glasses go. Silverware might be a little bit more tricky. Um, this silverware set that I got um, is easily, I'm going to say at least five years old. I purchased it at um, Dillard's on New Year's Day in one of their sales. And if you're not familiar with it, their New Year's Day sale, um, I haven't been lately to be honest with you just because I don't, I, I wasn't really looking, but I happen to be there because their Christmas stuff on New Year's Day is usually like 50% off, but then it's 50% off the clearance price or something like it's marked down on clearance and then it's marked down again. It's crazy. Um, so anyways, these were already on clearance because other things that are on clearance in the store are also reduced more. Um, it just depends on what department it's in. And I saw these and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I need to get these. And I use them for more special occasions, but they are perfect for this, um, for this look. I mean, those colors in Unicorn Dream is just like the perfect combination. And um, yep, even the cats in the background <laughs> agreeing. But I mean, look how that rainbow effect matches into these placemats perfectly. And that's, to be honest, um, like a total Bob Ross happy accident because I wasn't exactly trying to match these colors up, but it happened to work out that way. But um, so I don't know that they're available anymore, but I think whatever basic silverware set you can get your hands on would be fine. I just like these because of the color and they kind of have um, similar effects to what I was looking to create in the centerpiece. And so I just want to talk about the centerpiece a little bit more because it is very scalable to whatever size table you're using. Um, and, and honestly, whatever decor, like if you're using it at a other party or something, and you need this around the house easily could be used for that. And what I was a little disappointed about in my Pinterest search, and this is just totally like a mini rant here, so bear with me. If you follow me on Pinterest, you know I'm on Pinterest a lot. And I love Pinterest. And obviously people love what I pin or else I wouldn't have nearly 60,000 people follow me. And thank you for that. I really appreciate that other people like what I like. But, 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 the unicorn thing, it's so trendy right now and I love it, but everything is made for like six year old girls which is fine, but sometimes as adults just want to have our own unicorn party. So 
With that being said, that was kind of my challenge for this centerpiece, was to create something that kind of embodied the unicorn, rainbow, spirit dream and trend, but was something that was nice enough that adults could look at and go, oh, hey, good job. It's not a pinata. I'm proud of you, you know? And I didn't want it to be covered with glitter and just like stupid levels of confetti. I didn't want that. So that is where this comes in. Now, I'll go through all of this on my blog, like I said, in greater detail, but all of the pedestals that I got here, um, I got from the thrift store. With that being said, though, easily you could get these at, or at least the clear ones, at your local craft store. I'm pretty sure every craft store I have here in Central Florida has some sort of pedestal like these. And I don't know for sure, but I am pretty sure, um, I mean, I got this pink pedestal, the taller one at the thrift store, but I am 99% sure that I've seen it at Ikea. So take a look over there if you're looking for something like that. But you know, just something to play with the height a little bit. And then the cylinders themselves, I'm not sure if you can tell, let me back up here. Um, but if you look at this, there's two that are this big and then three that are taller. Um, so the two on the clear pedestals are the shorter cylinders and the other ones are taller and that's just to add a little bit more drama and dimension and height to it um it really i couldn't tell you like oh you need this this and this because it doesn't really matter what i tell you what you need because if your table is a different size or you're going for a different look or you like them clustered differently it wouldn't the measurements i gave you don't matter um but i really want to spend a few minutes here and just look at all the cool close-ups that this centerpiece has like how cool is that kind of rainbow kind of, I don't even know what to describe it. Like it's very psychedelic looking and I'm looking at my camera trying to capture it and I can tell that it is freaking out just trying to get all of the uh, <laughs> the different colors and shininess and just all the different elements to it. But um, I really love this, especially with floating candles. I think it's, um, it's, just, it's just really cool. It's really unique. Uh, it's modern and more importantly, it's so so easy to do and so cheap and I really like that in a centerpiece and especially one that doesn't involve flowers um because that's that's tricky to do so I mean how cool is that looks neat has the rainbow effect not just floating candles and also not just boring flowers not that there's anything wrong with flowers but there's plenty of flowers already out in the world and we can expand our horizons apparently the cat agrees with me as always, guys, thank you for watching. I can't wait to hear what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Make sure you check out the rest of my channel for the DIY tutorials on how these placemats and uh, centerpieces are made. And if you're interested in bringing a little bit of millennial nesting ideas into your life, make sure you check out some of my other content too because all of the tablescapes that you're seeing me make are done mostly on thrift store finds and on my folding table because that's what I have. So it's all very easy to do, very accomplishable in any situation you're in. And I want to inspire you guys to do something pretty and nice and just homey at your own place and make it your own unique twist and not look like it's out of a 20 year old decorator's book. So if there's something you want to see more of or haven't seen yet and you're kind of itching to see somebody do, let me know. I will be happy to tackle that. Thanks so much for watching.